Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Uh, today let's talk about microservices and events and how to build event-driven microservices uh, but uh, also uh, we'll cover um, like common patterns about producing events and consuming events and some useful libraries but also I want to uh, go one step further and uh, start imagining this platform uh, where you can register your connections between your microservices without actually writing your consumer code. And uh, we'll discuss the uh, downsides of this approach and uh, also the benefits, what we can achieve and why um, I'm looking into solving a problem like that. So um, there were couple videos on the channel already regarding the uh, producer side. Uh, so I was mentioning tools like uh, DBZoom, which is a CDC connector, um, a capture data change connector, which works on top of uh, a lot of databases. And basically it's not using a query uh, to get new data from your tables, but it's actually using the uh, transaction log that's available in in database for example in in Postgres you had this right ahead log and um, uh, it basically really reliable because uh, each update is inserted in the log and then connector can just get that and it eliminates a lot of problems uh, but for the microservice it's really important if you write a message to Kafka uh, is to do it through uh, the database and it's because you can rely on ACID transactions uh, for some guarantees so for example you write an uh, update in your resource or you uh, creating a new event and then at the same time in the same transaction you're creating a message in an outbox table and then in Debezium there's an outbox uh, transformation that can split your messages by the stream type. You have uh, separate uh, topics now in Kafka. Each contains events related to a specific stream uh, stream ID um, stream type. So that could be like a stream type could be orders, could be customers, and then we have all events related to that entity in a single topic. So this is pretty standard, I believe, nowadays. Uh, and that's fine. So that's about the uh, producer side. And if you want it in more details, search for Debezium related uh, videos on the channel. Uh, but what we have next? So now we have a topic, right? And usually if we use Outbox um, pattern, we'll have our stream ID as the key of the message. And then we have our consumers. And uh, the first obvious uh, way to uh, to communicate, to, to consume Kafka is basically include a Kafka consumer uh, inside, the, uh, inside the consumer service, right? Um, and that's perfectly valid approach, uh, but it will, it's getting trickier when you have uh, hundreds of microservices, right? So now you have to duplicate this code and you need to keep everything consistent so you can have a library, uh, but anyway, if you do a change, you now need to roll that out into uh, hundreds of microservices um, and all these maintenance uh, problems. Uh, so what if instead of creating a consumer right inside uh, our consumer service, we have a, like a layer in, in the middle and that could, could sound a bit crazy, but probably it's not that bad really. Uh, so is it will uh, encapsulate all this logic related to uh, consuming messages from Kafka and then it will call uh, an HTTP endpoint in our consumer service and it will uh, like basically pass the event as a payload in the request. And the responsibility of the consumer service is to expose an HTTP endpoint where our um, uh, platform can send events and then implement some uh, basic item potency uh, inside the uh, inside the handler. So what we want is some kind of storage uh, that can uh, like it could be service database or something like that uh, where we can check if this event if this 
particular ID of an event was already processed or not. Um, and if it was already processed, in case we don't want to duplicate the work, so we uh, say that that was already processed, continue next. But what we can do in this middle layer uh, in the distribution platform, right? Uh, and I also talked about this library on the channel. The library is called uh, Parallel Consumer uh, from Confluent, and it's a Java library. Uh, it gives pre decent features on top of a plain Kafka consumer. So in plain Kafka consumer, we have partitions as a way to scale and uh, all messages inside the partition should be processed in order. Uh, so if we have a problem with one message, we literally have a blocked partition for like the entire partition is blocked. What the parallel consumer can do is it can do uh, independent processing of keys inside the partition, right? So, of course, there is no, uh, like, it's it, it's not coming for free. So, for example, if we uh, skipped a message or, like, a message is in retry loop, we're now blocking that particular key and our lag is growing in the metrics. But in reality, we're only blocking a small uh, subset of messages for the same key. Everything else is still processing, right? So, this could be a part of this platform, so we have this scalability built in inside. And also what I'm trying to achieve here is we kind of removing the knowledge of Kafka from our consumer services. So that there is no configuration uh, related to Kafka, no generation of the certs. Uh, the, it is really simple. You just expose an HTTP endpoint, right? Uh, obvious downside of this approach is that it's an extra http call in between so if if you're doing something like that should be like super low latency that probably won't work for you but from what i've seen the idea that you reduce this maintenance and uh, effort that uh, developers should spend to add kafka consumption to their services uh, to reduce that is much more important and the speed of development is much more important than this extra HTTP call, uh, single HTTP call in between uh, in most cases. So this is overall um, architecture. So we have this uh, event distributors and really now if there is a new service that wants uh, to consume a particular topic, there is no code to, to write. You need to expose an HTTP endpoint in your uh, consumer service and then uh, submit some kind of config to this uh, middle layer, uh, which I call event distributor. It basically, like input topic, this name, and uh, base URL of the service to receive messages. And also we can extend that to create different configs. So here, for example, I created some additional features that we can introduce in this middle layer. Uh, so we can have a rate limiting. So for example, we can say, we can wrap our event, hand, uh, event processing here in a rate limit and can say that this consumer can only accept this amount of messages per minute or something. Uh, could be useful in some cases. Then we uh, also will have retries for free because the parallel consumer library um, is doing retry, infinite retries for you. And it can be configured to have uh, exponential backoff, which is really handy in this case. Then um, we can implement after skipping, uh, uh, after skipping events, after number of retries, if we want this behavior from our consumer. So for example, we fail to process message once, twice, or maybe three times, everything with exponential back off. And after three, five times, whatever we put in the config, we just say we give up on this particular message. Um, that could be also configurable. And then uh, what we really want in our particular case in microservices, we want a way to say that um, we want to skip this particular stream ID uh, so we don't have this growth in lag in our metrics. But what that means is that uh, we want all messages from this stream ID to be skipped. And in that case, that's why I added this database 
of some kind here in this middle uh, middle layer. So it could be shared. It, it shouldn't be even a relational database. I think some um, no SQL, SQL databases, DynamoDB, for example, in AWS can work here pretty well, I think. Uh, and the reason here is just to store this skipped messages that we want potentially to reprocess later. So here we're skipping in a particular stream ID that uh, has problems right now uh, and we can expose it in and show it in some kind of UI, say that this particular uh, consumer skipped this stream ID and then we have all these events and then we can have some buttons to click and do the reprocessing of that and unskip this stream ID if we get more events later. So in that case, we store a small amount of data here uh, that we can reprocess later. And also this data can survive uh, more than retention period in our Kafka topics because there's a separate um, life cycle policy here. So yeah, and yeah, I also covered this replay uh, skipped events by stream ID. So now I'll show some code. Obviously, I haven't built all of these features that I mentioned here. Uh, probably will do it uh, in future videos. But for now, uh, some basic examples. So I'll have a, a component that will represent our event processor, a parallel consumer for the event distributor, and then a simple service that exposes an event, uh, an a a a HTTP endpoint, and it will receive events. So here we go. Um, for this video, I just decided to write some plain Java and uh, our consumer service is really simple for now. Um, I have some to-dos to do later. So basically it's like a Javelin simple application. And then we have a post endpoint uh, events. And then we have our body, uh, which is this class. And we will have event ID, event type, stream ID, stream type, and payload um, as the base. And then we just basically saying that we're processing the message and returning uh, 201 uh, status. And the event distributor is a bit more complex. Now we have our uh, uh, parallel consumer instance. So to do that, we uh, create a Kafka consumer first, and then we configure our parallel consumer with some options. Uh, we're passing the consumer right here. We're saying that we want the ordering to be by key. So that means we have independent stream uh, keys uh, processed on a thread pool. And um, here, I'm just on each event, I'm building a request and I'm doing a post request to events endpoint and base URL and I'm passing the body, um, like the expected body uh, representing the event. And then here, if the response is not what we expect uh, and what we consider to be a uh, successful uh, indicator of the event's uh, processing, we are printing the exception and um, throwing exception. And this uh, any exception basically will... Uh, trigger a parallel consumer to reprocess event, but this particular one, one I believe, uh, will do the logs slightly better. So it, it will be just printed once instead of two times. Um, and yeah, uh, that's everything I have so far. And there's still a lot of to extend here, as I said, all these features that I mentioned. Yeah, I think that's that's it. I'll probably publish this uh, on GitHub and I'll try to extend it later with uh, all the features I mentioned. Um, let me know what you think. And probably the, the last thing I want to mention is that it's not that crazy idea, right? So for example, there's a um, Dapper IO uh, project and it has this idea of abstracting the, for example, the uh, PubSub component uh, and it works in slightly different because here you're supposed to have a sidecar for all your containers with a dapper inside. And then uh, this sidecar is responsible for consuming message, uh, messages from Kafka and then sending them by local host to the uh, main container. But it's still the same idea, right? It's still HTTP call in between. The thing I don't like about uh, this uh, approach is I'm pretty sure there's no features like in parallel consumer and I really 
want to keep that because uh, like in our use case um, the processing of keys independently is just like you know a killer feature uh, we don't want to block the entire processing if there's one failed event we really want to uh, keep everything working and then we want a way to skip this message and bring the lag back down to, to zero and then replay after um, so yeah that, that's it for the video uh, thanks for watching and uh, leave your thoughts in comments and please also subscribe and like the video and there are also options to support my my channel and my work uh, links are in the description of the video thanks a lot uh, see you next video bye bye